hello guys welcome to biology made easy this is miss natasha and i'm going to take you through today's topic so today we are going to look at cells we are going to define what a cell is we are going to look at the cell organelles and their functions and we are going to look at how some of the cells in animals and in plants are specialized for their functions so without wasting any time let's jump right into it all organisms are made up of cells and a cell is defined as the basic unit of structure and function in an organism. So let's now look at what a typical animal cell looks like and what a typical plant cell looks like. So this is what a typical plant cell looks like. It has got a cell membrane and just outside the cell membrane, it has got a cell wall. A typical plant cell also has a nucleus and a nuclear envelope surrounding the nucleus. It also has chloroplasts, the cytoplasm, a large vacuole containing cell sap and starch grains inside the chloroplasts. And in this diagram, we can see what a typical animal cell looks like. It has got a cell membrane, a nucleus with the nuclear envelope, the cytoplasm, and small vacuoles. So this is what a typical animal cell looks like. Let's now move on to the cell organelles. Cell organelles are the little organs that are found inside the cell that perform various life processes, for example, the mitochondria and the nucleus. So the mitochondria provides energy for the cell and the nucleus contains the genetic material. So the first one we are going to look at is the cell membrane. So all the cells have got a cell membrane or a cell surface membrane so a cell membrane is a very thin layer of proteins and fats that surrounds a cell it controls what goes into the cell and what comes out of the cell and it is partially permeable and this means that it allows some substances to pass through but not others and this serves to protect the cell so the main function of the cell membrane is to control what comes out of the cell and what goes into the cell and to protect the cell. Let's now look at the cell wall. So the cell wall is found in plants, but animal cells do not have cell walls. The cell wall surrounds the cell. It is found just outside the cell membrane and it is made up of mainly cellulose. That's why it is called the cellulose cell wall. So the cellulose cell wall forms a very strong covering for the cell and this helps to protect and support the cell. The cell wall also prevents the cell from bursting when it absorbs a lot of water and it swells and the cell wall is fully permeable. So the main function of the cell wall is to protect and support the cell. Let's now look at the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that is found inside the cell. It contains many substances dissolved in it, especially the proteins, and many metabolic reactions take place inside the cytoplasm. Moving on, let's look at the vacuoles. So a vacuole is a space in a cell that is surrounded by a membrane containing a solution. Plants have got very large vacuoles which contain a solution of sugars and other substances. So this solution of sugars and other substances is called the cell sap. So a full vacuole presses outwards on the rest of the cell and it helps to keep the cell in shape. So the main function of the vacuole is to keep the cell in shape and to store sugars and other substances 
in a solution that is called the cell sap. Moving on, let's now look at the chloroplasts. So the chloroplasts are only found in green plants. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts. So chloroplasts contain a green pigment that is called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll absorbs energy from sunlight and it uses this energy to make food for the plant during photosynthesis. So this is what... A chloroplast looks like under a microscope. So the main function of a chloroplast is to photosynthesize. Let's now look at the nucleus. So the nucleus is where the genetic information is stored and this information is kept on chromosomes which are inherited from an organism's parents. And the chromosomes are made up of DNA. So in general, the nucleus stores genetic information. Let's now look at the mitochondria. So mitochondria are found in almost all the cells. They are the powerhouse of the cell. This means that they provide the energy that is needed to carry out the life processes inside the cell. So inside the mitochondrion, oxygen is used to release energy from carbohydrates. So in general, the main function of the mitochondria is to provide energy. Let's now look at the ribosomes. So ribosomes are small secular organelles that are found in all cell types. They can be found attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum or scattered freely inside the cytoplasm. So the main function of the ribosomes is to make proteins. Let's now look at the endoplasmic reticulum. So the endoplasmic reticulum can be rough or it can be smooth. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is studded with ribosomes on its surface and it provides a place where the ribosomes can make proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes and hormones and steroids are made in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is also responsible for the modification of proteins that are made by the ribosomes. Let's now look at the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus looks like a stack of plates. It transports proteins around the cell and out of the cell. So the main function of the Golgi apparatus is to transport proteins around the cell and out of the cell. Let's now look at the similarities and the differences between plant cells and animal cells. So plant cells have a cellular cell wall outside the cell membrane, but animal cells do not have a cell wall. Plant cells have a cell membrane. Animal cells also have a cell membrane. Plant cells have a cytoplasm and animal cells also have a cytoplasm. Plant cells have a nucleus and animal cells also have a nucleus. But in animal cells, the nucleus is usually in the center of the cell. In plants, the nucleus is found in the periphery of the cell. Plant cells often have chloroplasts containing chlorophyll, but animal cells do not have chloroplasts. Plant cells often have very large vacuoles containing cell sap and animal cells only have small vacuoles. The small vacuoles that are found in animal cells are temporary. This means that at one point you can look at the animal cell and you can find small vacuoles and at another point you can look at an animal cell and you cannot find any small vacuoles. Plant cells often have starch grains but animal cells never have starch grains. Plant cells are often regular in shape and animal cells are often irregular in shape. So these are the similarities and the differences between plant cells and animal cells. Let's now look at cell specialization. 
This means that we are looking at how some of the cells in animals and in plants are specialized for their certain functions. So large organisms contain a lot of cells, but not all the cells look alike. This is because the cells most probably have different functions. For example, the cells on your skin look different from the cells in your eye. So this is called cell specialization. So all the cells carry out activities which are characteristic of living things, but many of them are specialized for certain functions. For example, the palisade mesophyll cells, the root hair cells, red blood cells, muscle cells, sperm, ova, neurons, and white blood cells. The first ones we are going to look at are the palisade mesophyll cells. Palisade mesophyll cells are found beneath the epidermis of the leaf. This means that they are found towards the surface of the leaf and these cells are involved in photosynthesis. So the special features that enable the palisade mesophyll cells to carry out photosynthesis are that they have a lot of chloroplasts for photosynthesis and large vacuoles and all these features make photosynthesis efficient. So this is the transverse section through a small part of a leaf. We can see the palisade mesophyll cells towards the surface of the leaf. And these cells contain a lot of chloroplasts with very large vacuoles. So these are the palisade mesophyll cells. Let's now look at how the root hair cells are adapted to carry out their functions. So root hair cells are found near the ends of plant roots and their main function is to absorb water and mineral salts. This means that they also possess certain special features that enable them to absorb water and mineral salts and these features are possessing a root cape to protect the tip of the root as the root grows into the soil and possessing small root hairs that increase the surface area of water and mineral salt absorption. So in this diagram, we can see a root hair cell with the root cap and the root hairs which increase the surface area for water and mineral salt absorption. Let's now look at how red blood cells are specialized for their function. So red blood cells are found in the blood of many animals and they transport oxygen around the body. So the main function of red blood cells is to transport oxygen around the body. And the special features that enable the red blood cells to transport oxygen are possessing hemoglobin or a protein that is called hemoglobin which binds to oxygen. Red blood cells do not have any other cell organelles inside them and this provides a lot of space for the transport of oxygen. And red blood cells are biconcave and this enables the red blood cells to squeeze in through the capillaries. Let's now look at how the white blood cells are specialized to carry out their function. So white blood cells are involved in immunity. This means that they protect an organism against infectious pathogens such as bacteria and viruses. For example, the phagocytes. So the phagocytes are an example of white blood cells. And the special features which enable the white blood cells to carry out their protective function are that they have a large nuclei which can be multilobed and they have many mitochondria for energy production. So in this diagram we can see what a red blood cell looks like. It is biconcave or donut shaped and it does not have a nucleus or any other cell organelles and this provides a lot of space for the transport of oxygen 
and this is what a white blood cell looks like this one is multi lobed it has got a multi lobed nucleus let's now look at how the sperm cell is adapted to carry out its function so sperm cells are found in testes they are involved in reproduction this means that they fuse with an egg to produce a zygote and the special features which enable the sperm cells to carry out reproduction are that they have a tail which is used for movement so this tail is used for moving towards the egg during reproduction they also have numerous mitochondria for energy because energy is needed for moving the tail or for swimming towards the egg they also have a large nucleus with genetic material and they have an acrosome which helps them in penetrating the egg so in this diagram we can see what a human sperm cell looks like it has got a tail or a flagellum which produces the swimming movement it possesses a middle piece containing mitochondria to release energy for swimming it possesses a nucleus with chromosomes or the genetic material and it possesses an acrosome which helps the sperm to penetrate the egg so this is what a human sperm cell looks like let's now look at how the eggs or the ova are specialized for their function so the eggs or the ova are found in the ovaries and they are involved in reproduction this means that they fuse with a sperm cell to produce a zygote and the features that enable them to carry out reproduction are that they have a large nucleus with genetic material and they have an energy and nutrition source for the egg in this diagram we can see what a human egg cell looks like it possesses a nucleus with chromosomes or the genetic material it possesses a cytoplasm with an energy and nutrient store it has got a cell surface membrane and a layer of jelly let's now look at how the neurons are adapted to carry out their function so neurons are found throughout the bodies of animals and their main function is to transport information around the body in the form of impulses and the special features which enable the neurons to transport information are that they have numerous mitochondria for energy production and they have myelin sheath which helps them to transport information faster so this is what um, a neuron looks like it has got a cell body and this part which contains the myelin sheath so this is the myelin sheath and it helps the neurons to transport information faster lastly let's now look at how the muscle cells are adapted to carry out their function so muscle cells are found throughout the bodies of animals and their main function is to produce movement so the special features which enable the muscle cells to produce movement are that they have numerous mitochondria for energy production and they have organelles that are known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum these organelles contain a lot of calcium and the calcium is needed in order to produce movement so we have come to the end of our session we looked at cells we defined what a cell is we looked at the cell organelles and we also looked at how some of the cells in plants and in animals are specialized for their functions so if you want to research more on this topic i highly recommend that you read the biology course book it is a great book so thank you guys for watching until the end